Well, good morning, Facebook people. <coughs> How are you doing this morning? Please forgive me. I'm uh, having some troubles this morning. Uh, let's see what time it is. Well, this is going to post late. Sorry about that. Nothing I can do about it. Um, anyway, uh, today we're going to be doing Advent, starting of the Advent season, and uh, as I was, um, Advent runs usually the Sunday after Thanksgiving is the first Sunday, and sometimes there's only four Sundays. That, um, sometimes that's just the way it is, you know. Um, yeah, it's just the way it is. There's only four Sundays. <coughs> this this year there's five. And my wife has agreed to do it. And so it runs the 26th, the 3rd, the 10th, the 17th, and the 24th. Being the 24th this year will be... Um, uh, Advent. Uh, 24th is you know Christmas Eve day, and then Christmas Eve we light the Christ candle, which we'll talk about later. Um, but anyway, so we're going to be doing Advent. I just wanted to do a little bit of rundown, talk about what is Advent, what the different symbolizations are. Because a lot of times they do Advent and they just talk about the candle and the candles and what they mean and stuff. Nobody really talks about what is Advent. <coughs> it took me to f figure it out um, a bit about it. So... Uh, so that's what happened. And uh, just to let you know, um, what Advent means is a coming into place of you, or the biblical thing is means uh, arrival. It's the significance of the start and end of a arrival of a person. <clears throat> it's a coming of somebody it's arrival it's waiting for somebody to come and as we go through advent advent is meant to be a time of preparation for the coming of christ the baby jesus um and it was and it's been used as a way to signify as as we go into the holiday season um christmas um and we're celebrating the birth of jesus christ understanding that the 24th of December is not Jesus' birthday. It's his birthday is actually in October. Um, but that's when we celebrate it. And a lot of people look at it different ways. And, uh, you know, um, a lot of people look at the tree, just, just a side note, and they, they say, oh, this is a pagan holiday. And the tree means this and that and the other thing over here and that and this and um <clears throat> I want to let you know that um, the uh, Christmas tree is an evergreen which speaks of um, eternal life because it's it, even the winter time uh, uh, evergreen trees well it's green it stays green all the time if a tree turns evergreen turns brown that's because it's dead so but anyway um, here let's just take a moment to pray and ask God's blessing over today Heavenly Father we just ask you today Lord help me to get through this please Lord let this thing post quickly I know it's not going to it's going to end up being at 930 I need to start anyway <coughs> But, Lord, I pray that it would just be a, a blessing to everybody, Lord. Help us to get through this. I pray, Father God, you would speak to our hearts. Let us feel your presence. Let us hear your words. Let us hear your voice today, Lord. Lord, let the words I speak be yours. Lord, I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, <clears throat> uh, let me read a little bit about right here. Many people know that the popular symbols and, and customs of Advent, such as Advent wreath, but do <clears throat> not know their meanings and why we have them. Below is a list of 
some of the well-known Advent symbols and the meanings behind them. The Advent <coughs> wreath is one of the best known symbols of Advent. Traditionally made evergreen branches formed into a circle with four candles held within. The evergreen circle is a symbol of eternal life. <coughs> if you notice, the circle goes round and round and round and round. It's never ending. You can never get to the end of a circle because this goes around in circles. You know, this keeps going round and round and round. Where if it's straight line, you go boom, boom. That, that's it. You know. <coughs> um, but anyway, the evergreen circle is a symbol of eternal life. <coughs> the green from the evergreen is considered a symbol of hope hope again that the green of it is a symbol of hope the start as a domestic tradition and entered into the churches in the 20th century advent candles are usually comprised of three purple candles one rose or pink the candles recall the, the weeks past until Christmas Purple candle symbolizes waiting and the potential, but not in the same way as Lent. Rose or pink is used as a third Sunday to Advent, symbolizing rejoicing. Since the third Sunday of Advent referred to the gauntlet rejoice Sunday. They are lit light, used as a symbol of Christ being the light of the world coming through the darkness. Sometimes the white candle is placed in the middle. People use this when lit as the representation of Christ entering into the world. Um, <clears throat> that's just some of the things that, that um, Advent has for us. But, <clears throat> you know, I, I, let's talk a little bit about the lighting. As it says here, when you light a candle, it's the lighting of the world, that Jesus Christ is the light of the world you know and we have the the center candle which is right in the center of the the wreath which is round the world and and uh so it, it, i was going to say something but i won't and uh <clears throat> so as we look at this um and the different meanings of it um Another meaning of the white candle is white. We use a white candle because Christ is pure. There's no sin in Christ. Um, so, all right. As we discussed, there is four candles. Um, you'll forgive me. I'm, I'm reading to see what where I need to read here. Um, here we go. Oh, okay, this is some more stuff we don't want. I, I, I want to read some of this here. Um, and some of the symbolizations. Ivy, the weakness of mankind clinging to God. You know, if you think about the ivy vine, it clings. Laurel, the victory of man through the love of God. Cypress, the eternal life of the cypress is a type of, of uh, evergreen. <clears throat> Eternal life of a person who accepts Christ. Rosemary, which is a different type of vine. The remembrance and acceptance of his coming. Holy, holly, the crown of thorns. Fir, the, ever, the living incense of God. Mistletoe, I thought this was interesting. Mistletoe is the eternal life. The four Outside candles traditionally represents hope, faith, joy, and peace. Um, faith sometimes is is love. They 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 also say it's love, love, faith. Um, the first, second, and fourth candles are purple. The the third candle is rose color. The center candle is white. Christmas celebrated on Jesus' birthday. Celebration of, of Christ's birth. Um, here we, we're going to be looking at a little bit about. Um, if you can't see me, I apologize. 
Um, purple is traditional, traditionally been the center color of the Advent. The color signifies repentance and fasting. Christians' customs of withholding one self food or some. Of other desires, practice where, where in Christmas, Christians demonstrate the devotion to God and sanctify their hearts and body. Purple symbolizes the so sober and reflective nature that of this period, as Christians prepare to commemorate the birth of Christ. Purple is also a literature color for Lent, which. Likewise, incorporates the times of competitions of, of repentance of spiritual preparation. The use of purple during both Lent, Blavert, and Lent underscores the parallel themes of preparation and spiritual reflect, reflect, reflection. Whew. Okay, purple is, has historically been associated with royalty of kingship. Purple Advent candle also... <coughs> Uh, symbolizes the supremacy of the kingship of Christ, who is recognized as the king of kings. So purple in this use uh, illustrates the expectations of and welcoming of the king celebrated during Advent. The following candles of the Advent wreath are traditionally purple. The first candle known as a prophecy candle, the candle of hope. The second candle is the Bethlehem candle, or the candle of peace. The fourth candle, called the angel candle, is the candle of love. All right, that's... So, as we look at these, I mean, even... Um, Also, you know, if you look at some of the prophecies, there are 333 prophecies that Jesus Christ coming fulfilled. Now, I say that, maybe it's fulfilled and died on the cross. Anyway, the prophecies that Jesus fulfilled when he was here on earth, there's no way that that was done by accident. Do you get that? There's no way that it was done by accident. The probable probability of fulfilling 333 prophecies is, it can't be done. Unless you've planned it out and you've done everything to the T, to the way Christ would have you do it. And, uh... Um, I'm just reading, see if I miss anything that I, I, I want to go over before I go on to the pink candle. Um, here's a set, here's a, a paragraph. And you have ever looked at the Advent wreath and wondered why there are three candle, three different colors candles, the Advent, the three Advent candle pur colors, purple, pink, and white, have deep spiritual symbolism and are representative of the faithful and anticipation of believers partaking ready their hearts and minds for the birth of the second coming of Christ. So that just gives us a little bit of understanding of Advent and what it's for, which is the preparation of our heart for the upcoming Christ. Coming of Christ. <clears throat> um, Christians use a wreath typically consisting of evergreen branches decorated in five candles and symbolizing the se several sacred phases, preparations, circular shape, and the wreath represent eternal and unending cycle of God's love. It is, it is usually made of evergreen branches which symbolizes enduring life and hope brought by Jesus Christ. These candles are traditionally lit on each of the four Sundays of Advent, starting the fourth, on the fourth Sunday before Christ. Um, 
some some say five uh, some will use five because they'll like the Christ candle um, uh, anyway in years past I've let four of them um, I have a hard time with going to church on Christmas because not because I don't feel you should go to church on Christmas, but I feel that um, that Christmas is a time for family. And that rushing around, getting ready to go to church, or having your kids whining about wanting to open up, um, that just makes it hard. Anyway, so we're going to go on to the pink candle. The third Advent candle color is pink. The pink called the shepherd's candle or the candle of joy. Um, that's why. Okay. Yep. Yeah. You know, the, there's the prophecy of Bethel and the angel candle, the hope, peace, and love. And now there's joy, which is the third Sunday. Um, the third gauntlet comes from the Latin word rejoice and it signifies the sense of joy and anticipation as Christmas approaches pink represents joy the triumph and the and this candle exhibits the traditions of the season of Advent away from the repentance and celebration of the gauntlet Gauntlet Sunday. A pink candle is typically lit in the Advent wreath to represent the joy and, and nearness of the birth of Jesus Christ. Um, scripture's reading for the pink candle may include passages that emphasize joy and rejoicing such as Philipp Philippians 4, 4, uh, 4, 7. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near, and um, it goes on. Um... The white candle um, is the Christ candle. Uh, it's a fifth candle um, placed in the center of the wreath as the white candle. The white candle is lit on the fourth Sunday of Advent, representing the completion of the fulfillment of Advent season as it it as it transitions. Actually, they say the fourth Sunday, but it's actually the fifth Sunday or Christmas Eve. It's because, as I said, sometimes there's only four Sundays, so they'll do a. They do the four Sundays, and then they'll do it lighted on the Christmas Eve, which is what we're going to do this year. Um, we're going to have it, and we're going to light it on the fourth Sunday, which, which will be. Forgive me, but it'll be giant chaos because my, my daughter is going to be involved and her, her friends and have friends over and we're going to do this lighting of the candle and it's going to be interesting so it signifies the, the culmination of the advent journey and the anticipation of Christ's birth the white is the advent candles color symbolizing purity light restoration and holiness white is also the the representation of victory. I didn't know that. <clears throat> the representation of victory. This white candle at the center of the Advent wreath, which is often called the Christ candle, the white candle, <clears throat> the white candle at the center of the Advent wreath, which is also called the Christ candle. Uh, that's not what I wanted. Uh, on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day is represented the arrival of Christ, who is seen as the light of the world and an embodiment of purity and holiness. Christ 
Jesus Christ is a righteousness, immaculate, pure Savior. He is the light that comes in the darkness to deprive the world. He is often described in the Bible wearing bright, profoundly white robes like snow, shining with the brightness of the light. Daniel 7 is such an account. Furthermore, those who accept Jesus Christ as Savior are cleansed of their sins, made whiter than snow. White can also symbolize hope in the new beginnings in the Advent season. Christ, as Christians, prepare for the birth of Jesus Christ in the white candle. <clears throat> can serve as a reminder of the hope and promise of, of Christ's coming, bringing, ushering in a new era of salvation and redemption. Observing the traditions of and meaning <coughs> of the Advent holds the importance of Christ's birth. So, anyway, um, and then as we look through the four weeks, Advent, the the first candle is purple, which is hope. Uh, the second candle is peace. The third candle is joy, and the fourth candle is love and with Christ. Um, and if we go back, we can find the other ones and or, which this year I think we're going to do a combination of, because the first candle is Bethlehem, oh no, prophecy, the prophecy candle and hope. And if we can understand that the prophecies were given to give hope to us. The second candle is peace, the Bethlehem candle, which is where Christ was born at. Bethlehem, and there's significance of Bethlehem, um, city of David, if you will. Uh, the third week is joy, which is... Um, uh, let's see the shepherd's candle, which the shepherds were in the in the field, and they the star came. Hey, hey come see Christ, and it's inviting everybody to come. And the fourth candle is love. Uh, <coughs> also, the angel candle, which the angel appeared to the shepherds and they told them to come. And the angel also appeared to Mary and uh, came to Mary and told Mary of what's going to happen. And then we have the fourth candle, or the fifth candle, which is the Christ candle, which is the purity of Christ. And uh, <clears throat> so that, all that is such an awesome thing for us. And uh, I'm going to end there. And... Uh, say you know hey we need to keep our people in prayer um forgive me today for not praying for everybody like i normally do um but keep them in prayer um kim and her family and debbie and her family please be praying for my family my wife um pray for my stepdaughter alex which she needs lots of prayer she's uh she's struggling um and uh, i guess we should be praying for her anyway but Anyway, you know, um, so I hope this was enlightful for you. Um, I should be looking at my phone that I was looking at something. And uh, um, for you, and I hope you will tune in and to the coming weeks of uh, Advent with us as we look into the different weeks of Advent and uh, how we're going to do this and uh, I'm excited for what God's going to be doing and how he's going to work and move in our lives so let's just close in a word of prayer and uh, ask the Lord's blessing upon us I'll also be praying for me because this week I want to get my front porch done and I'm going to need lots of strength and good weather Heavenly Father we just come to you now Lord we ask you to touch us and help us Encourage us, Lord. Let us feel your presence. Let us hear your words. 
Lord, I pray today, Lord, that this would touch lives. Lord, I pray that we'd have lots and lots and lots of viewers, Lord. And I know that people were expecting us to have this on here at a certain time, and we didn't do it. Lord, help us to do the, a better job. I pray right now, Father God, that you'd speak to us. Speak to us. Speak to our hearts. Lord, heal those that need healing. Lord, now touch our nation, Lord. Our nation needs lots of love and tenderness. And I pray all that in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, this is Pastor John saying, hoo -hoo, it's time to sign off. You have a great Sunday, and I look forward to the coming weeks. Please remember about Wednesday, we will be having our uh, uh, size prayer at 6 o'clock. Hopefully, I have that on at the right time. All right, hey, have a great day. Bye.